Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. A judge blocks an Alabama pro-life law banning most abortions. Massachusetts bill would legalize abortions up to their birthday. And a Michigan Democrat governor unveils a bill to legalize abortions up to birth. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? On today's show, we have three pro-life stories or pro-abortion stories, if you're from the other side, from three different American states where the abortion arguments are unfolding in Alabama, in Massachusetts, and in Michigan. Our first story today comes from Life News, who reports that a judge has blocked an Alabama pro-life law which banned most abortions or would have protected most unborn babies. Life News reports that Alabama may not enforce its law to protect unborn babies from abortion, a federal judge ruled last Tuesday. The Montgomery Advertiser reports that U.S. District Court Judge Myron Thompson issued the preliminary injunction against the near total abortion ban after abortion activists sued the state to demand their right to kill children in Alabama. The judge agreed with the child killers, right? The Alabama law protects unborn babies from abortion in almost all circumstances. State House Bill 314 was signed into law and did make abortions a felony in the state of Alabama jail time for child killers, but exceptions would have been allowed if the mother's life was at risk. And of course, mothers would never have been punished for having an abortion under that legislation, but abortionists, so-called doctors who kill children, could face prison times for violations. Well, this upset the Democrats on the left, Planned Parenthood and the ACLU, the Anti-Christian Civil Liberties Union, sued to block the law just a few days after the Alabama Republican Governor Kay Ivey signed it into law last May. Judge Thompson wrote in his decision the following words, quote, Alabama's abortion law ban contravenes clear Supreme Court precedent. It violates the right of an individual to privacy to make choices central to personal dignity and autonomy. It diminishes the capacity of women to act in society and make reproductive decisions. It defies the United States Constitution, end quote. Of course, nowhere in the Constitution does it guarantee a right to an abortion. In fact, it does guarantee rights given to our posterity and life for those who are persons. Of course, they don't think babies are persons, but that is their way around the Constitution, which would protect life. Although the decision is disappointing to some, the ruling was not unexpected. State Representative Terry Collins, who sponsored the pro-life legislation said that she hopes the law will prompt the US Supreme Court to restore human rights to babies in the womb. Associated Press reports that Collins said the following, quote, our law was designed to overturn Roe v. Wade at the Supreme Court level. And today's ruling is merely the first on many steps on that legal journey. I remain confident that our mission will be successful and appreciate the support of millions of citizens who support our effort to preserve unborn life, end quote. The state law was slated to go into effect on November 15th, but Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall has been defending the law in court. Earlier, he said the US Constitution does not guarantee a right to an abortion. He said Planned Parenthood and the ACLU lack legal standing 
He also argued the US Supreme Court was wrong about abortion in Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey, and those bad decisions should be overruled. And that's the news. Our thanks to lifenews.com for that report. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. In this legislation in Alabama, it protects all babies unless the mother's life is in danger. And not just her psychological health or discomfort, right? Her physical life, if the mother's gonna die, then it's one for one. There is no moral dilemma, it's okay to save the life of the mother. Now, unfortunately, on the other side, there is a spirit of child killing for convenience and child killing is murder. And yes, the baby's a child, even before or even on its birthday, some other states like Massachusetts, Michigan, we're about to read, are trying to have birthday abortions, literally legalize it up until the moment that the baby takes its first breath, you can kill the child. There is a demonic spirit of evil and murder inside of some legislators who are opposing this and perhaps even on this federal judge. We need to pray about this, would you join me? Father in heaven, we pray. We pray uh, your anathema upon those who would kill children prematurely. And Father, we know how you love every child, how you've created every child in the womb, as it says in Jeremiah chapter one, where you say, Father, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. God, you've called each one of these children to be a prophet to the nations, even before they were formed in their mother's womb. Father, we ask your blessing on each child, that you will look over them and preserve them and defend them from those who would come against them to take their life. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, a Massachusetts bill is going to legalize abortion up until a baby's birthday. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. I even demanded my own misdemeanor court martial. And finally, Congress agreed with me and reversed the bad Navy policy. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign that petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Please visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our next story comes from LifeNews.com who reports that not only would a Massachusetts bill legalize abortion up to birth, it would also allow infanticide after a child is born. Life News reports that Massachusetts abortion activists upped the pressure last week on state lawmakers to pass a bill 
legalizing abortions for basically any reason up to and even after birth. How can you have a post-birth abortion? Isn't that just child killing? Oh, it's child killing before they're born too. Okay, either way. Masquerading their deadly agenda as a fight for women's health care, State Attorney General Maura Healey and Rep. Ariana Presley and City Councilors Michelle Wu and Lydia Edwards launched a social media campaign last week Monday to support a new bill legalizing abortion until and after birth, says the, the Boston Globe. But Massachusetts Citizens for Life, a pro-life group said the bill allows for quote, passive infanticide, end quote. In other words, if a baby's born alive, just leave it on the table to die. That's passive child killing through neglect, even if they're born alive. The bill would also uh, not require medical care for babies born alive after an abortion. Dubbed as the Roe Act, the bill would eliminate basically all regulations and restrictions on abortions in Massachusetts. No regulations, no restrictions. It would allow abortions up to birth, even if there is no physical threat to the mother's life and could put young sexual abuse victims at greater risk by eliminating any state parental consent requirement. The pro-abortion campaign paid for by NARAL, Massachusetts, attempts to hide the bill's extremism in a series of videos and ads. They're now running these ads on Politico, Facebook, YouTube, and Masterlist, according to Boston Magazine. In one video, State Attorney General Mara Healy said the following, quote, Massachusetts, we have to do better. Healthcare decisions should be made between a patient and her doctor. Anything medical should never be political, end quote. Another video features Kate Carson, a middle school teacher from Boston who traveled out of state for a late term abortion, according to the magazine. And that's the news, or thanks to Life News for that report. So here they have, uh, teachers in Boston who have to travel out of state for late term abortions. But now, thanks to the generosity of Democrats who are passing these pro-abortion laws, they don't have to travel to kill their children. They can do it right near their home, right there in Massachusetts. Isn't that convenient? No, it's child killing. Before or after it, I mean, let's say you're a Democrat. Let's say you believe in abortion up to birth, but even if a child is born alive, even if they're living there breathing and crying on the table, well, the doctor botched an abortion. The, the mom meant to have an abortion, but the baby was born alive. And now the law in Massachusetts will be to kill that child too. The Democrats have no standard of when life begins. It doesn't even begin after you're born alive. Oh, that's not a person, they said. That's just a fetus? Well, wait, I thought a fetus, even according to them, is before you're born. Now even a living baby lying on the table is a fetus that they can kill. It proves that they have no logical standard of protecting innocent life. That their bloodlust is more important to them than any right of any other person outside of their convenience. It's demonic. The Bible says this in Genesis 9. God will require an accounting. Surely for your lifeblood, I will demand a reckoning. From the hand of every beast, I will require it. From the hand of every man, I will require it. From the hand of every man's brother, I will require the life of man. In other words, Remember Cain and Abel? God required the life of the murderer. Let's pray about this, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray for justice and we know that God, that your justice is coming for to redeem and, and uh, avenge, Father, not in our hands, but in your hands, Father, that you will avenge the innocent who are killed. And Father, I pray even for the souls of those pro-aborts in Massachusetts. 
that as your vengeance is coming, not through our hands, Father, but by your judgment, your righteous judgment, Father, I pray you show them mercy, that they will repent, that they will turn away from their legislation, that this will not even become law in Massachusetts or other states, that infanticide before or after birth will become an abomination and repugnant to the minds of Massachusetts voters who will hold their elected officials accountable at the ballot box and vote for pro-life lawmakers to end the Holocaust. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take another short break. When we come back, Michigan Democrat governor unveils a birthday abortion bill. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Reading today's headlines, doesn't it seem sometimes like the world is unreal? We hear about rumors of wars and we see legislative and cultural battles here in America. But where is our hope? I think it's in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're offering now a, a DVD series led by family ministry leader Vince Dacchioli, Real Christianity in an Unreal World. It behooves us to really understand what does it mean to be relevant as a Christian and to be real and to spread the gospel in a way to where more and more people will, be in, will embrace it and move yeah. in the right direction. We can send you the entire DVD series, which is three-part teaching with Vince and a bonus of my personal testimony for a suggested donation of just $30 if you call now at 866-Obey-God or write to the address on your screen or visit PrayInJesusName.org. We want to rush you this important teaching to ground your faith in real Christianity. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30-day prayer manual, How to Liberate the World in 30 Days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or write to the address on your screen, or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our next story comes from Life News reports that the Michigan governor, a Democrat, has unveiled her new bill to legalize abortions up to the time of birth, also known as birthday abortions. Happy birthday, you're dead. That's what they wanna do in Michigan, where Michigan Democrat Governor Gretchen Whitmer joined abortion activists last Tuesday to introduce legislation that would legalize the killing of unborn babies for basically any reason up until the time of their birth. Associated Press reports that the set of bills known as the Michigan Reproductive Health Act would eliminate basically all abortion restrictions in the state, including parental consent out the window, informed consent requirements out the window. It would also repeal a 1931 law that bans abortions but is not yet enforceable because of the Roe v. Wade decision of the Supreme Court in 1973. Whitmer's legislation, the new governor, does not have much hope of passing the Republican-controlled state legislature. Responding to this announcement, Right to Life of Michigan President, Barbara Listing said the following, quote, it's important that we continue to push legislation like this and use every tool at our disposal to protect a woman's right to choose. Responding to the announcement, Right to Life of Michigan President, Barbara Listing said the following, quote, it's no surprise that Governor Gretchen Whitmer wants to follow New York's lead and allow unlimited abortion on demand in Michigan. We know most Michiganders do not support secret teen abortions, unregulated medical facilities, or abortions, abortions up to the point of birth, end quote. According to the pro-life organization, the legislation would do all of those things. 
including allow minor teens to have secret abortions without their parents' consent or even knowledge, allow abortion facilities to ignore health and safety regulations that other medical clinics have to follow, and allow abortion facilities to refuse to provide informed consent to any woman. Allowing walk-in abortions with no waiting period is another cause of the bill. So that's the news, or thanks to Life News for that report and Michigan Right to Life for exposing this evil. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. In this case, we have a Democrat governor, Gretchen Whitmer, and God bless her, uh, she got elected. She is in charge of some parts of policy and, and the legislature there, led by mostly Democrats out of Detroit, are passing a range of bills that together are collectively referred to as the Michigan Reproductive Health Act that are going to allow, uh, eliminate any restrictions whatsoever on abortion in that state. If she signs this into law, and she's announced that she wants to if it comes to her desk, it will literally authorize secret teen abortions, all the things that we read. But where are the spirits in this story? Where's the spirit of God in this story? Where are the demonic spirits in this story? How can you see the non-human spirits? You can discern the non-human spirits by looking at the morality of the human actors involved. So for example, when Governor Gretchen has a voice telling her, go ahead and kill children, it's a good thing. Is that the voice of God or is that the voice of the devil? If she hears a different voice, or the pro-lifers in this situation, hear a voice that says, defend and respect innocent human life. Defend the right of the child to life. Is that the voice of God or is that the voice of the devil? I think it's the voice of God. And you can tell because it agrees with the scripture's understanding of morality. One voice is influencing humans to sin. The other voice is influencing humans to choose what is right. And the Bible says and defines right and wrong in Deuteronomy 19 saying this, lest innocent blood be shed in the midst of your land, which the Lord is giving you as an inheritance, and thus the guilt of bloodshed be upon you. Let's pray, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray against the demonic spirit of bloodshed, which is influencing men and women to choose sin, which causes our guilt, the guilt of bloodshed, Father, literally be upon us and our nation for allowing the abortion genocide and the demonic spirit of murder to influence our politics. Father, we pray against the demonic spirits that are influencing our legislators. We pray instead that they will listen to the voice of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, I'll have a word to conclude the show. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. How is your marriage doing? I wanna tell you about an exciting new four-part video DVD Bible study series on God's plan for marriage. In this video series, we team up with marriage and family ministry expert Vince Dacchioli. There are a lot of things that get in the way of uh, our ability to have a healthy marriage. 
But the way God intended it, he always wanted us to see his view of our relationship together. So everything we do when we talk about marriage or whether we're talking to men or whether we're talking to pastors and leaders, it all centers around this idea of vision. It's very important that we understand who God is and our relationship with Him is right in order for us to be able to live out really and truly Ephesians. And that also informs our role as men, how to love our wives. We can't really exactly. love them unless we understand the love of God. Exactly. So if you just think about love, you, we tend to think that love is an emotion. It's more uh, something that I feel, whereas the true definition of love, the way Jesus intended it, is, is not just an emotion, but it's, it's, a, it's charity, it's what I do. You know, to the degree that I am able to see my wife or my spouse through his eyes, that determines everything in my relationship. Yeah. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You wanna have this important four part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll free prayer line at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching and thank you for supporting us with your financial donations. We need your contributions to bring you these important and in fact, expand our audience. You know, we have opportunities to go on other networks that we can't quite afford because you, the viewers, need to step up. Please donate when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 29, then the people rejoiced for they had offered willingly because with a loyal heart they had offered willingly to the Lord, and even King David also rejoiced greatly. God bless you in Jesus' name. If you need prayer, pick up the phone and call us at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Chaps, I have two exciting announcements. For those of you who found us maybe one day a week, did you know we're on five days a week with in-depth analysis and Christian news reporting, and we pray the news. Where else are you gonna see that? Here's the exciting news. We're now on Apple TV. We're on five days a week on this exciting new streaming platform, Apple TV. Maybe you've already found us on Roku or Amazon Fire, but Apple TV, look for PIJN News in the spirituality category. And here's my other breaking news. Did you know we're also on podcast? Well, what's a podcast? Well, you can listen to us five days a week on audio, maybe when you're working out at the gym or driving in your car, you can watch the video on your smartphone, visit iTunes and look for PIJN News. We're also on 10 on-demand platforms, visit PrayInJesusName.org to find them all. And did I mention it's absolutely free? Other people charge a fee, but ours is free. Subscribe today to PIJN News. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.